Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for consideration comes from Matthew 5, verse 29. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And that is our text. I don't know what it is about the phrase hand-eye coordination that just takes me back to middle school PE class. Now that was one of those classes that you loved or you found the most creative ways to get out of a task. Whether it be from running to jumping jacks to sit-ups, the main thing that you were trying to develop in that PE class was your motor skills. And oftentimes, that included an activity that developed hand-eye coordination. Usually throwing a ball, sometimes raising up one of those parachutes and bringing it back down. But the progression of learning hand-eye coordination started out small, and it grew into learning a sport, or even playing dodgeball. But hand-eye coordination is just one of those things that you will never master. Throwing and catching a ball. Think about it. There are professionals who are paid to catch a ball, and sometimes they still aren't able to do it. As we watch the big game this evening, we will see that happen maybe once or twice. And the people who are watching might groan or, or grow in frustration. But this is one of those things, hand-eye coordination, throwing and catching the ball, that we might never master. But there is a bit of hope, because Dr. Andrew Budson, who is a neurologist and the chief in cognitive and behavioral neurology in Virginia, states that you can improve your hand-eye coordination by exercising, practicing skills, and treating the underlying condition. So, what is our underlying condition? Jesus addresses this issue when he gives his Sermon on the Mount, and he is talking about the Ten Commandments. But he doesn't stop at saying, you shall not. But he goes on and says, but I say to you. Things like, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Things like, everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Things like, everyone who divorces his wife except on the ground of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery. And things like, do not take an oath at all, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. Things like this are hints at the underlying condition Hints that sometimes we just overlook. Hints that we know in our heart are wrong. For we know when we look at the things that we do in our lives, sometimes we too drop the ball. But when we drop the ball, we know that we desire to do better as Christians. Because if those inward thoughts become outward actions, the things that we do become all that more difficult to fix. But Jesus, too, addresses those inward thoughts that need to be fixed also. Because there are things that we do in our everyday life that cause us guilt, they bring about stress or shame. And so Jesus is indicating for us a treatment. He is indicating for us to practice and exercise self-control. Work on controlling your mouth or your hands when you become impulsive or angry, so that what you do or say don't cause you to fall into sin. Work on self-control and controlling your eyes when you feel a sudden urge to look at someone based on their appearance. Work on your marriage. So that you are more concerned about whether your spouse feels loved by you 
rather than whether or not you are feeling love in return. And work on yourself so that you can see those times that you have failed and ask for forgiveness quickly and try to do better. For we know that we fail. And in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says that when you, fail, when you fail, pluck out your eye or cut off your hand. So what is it that we do? We know that each of us, we fail continually. We drop that ball. But we don't actually pluck out our eye or cut off our hand. For if we plucked out or cut out everything that caused us to sin, what would we be left with? There wouldn't be much there. So the question is, why does Jesus preach these words at all? For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. The point that Jesus is making here is that your whole sinful self will be thrown into the pit of hell if you were left to your own devices. Because it is not only your, your eyes or your hands that should be cut off, but that corruption goes from your eyes and in your hands even into your whole being. And so what is the treatment. The treatment is this, that God the Father will not cut it out and pluck it out of your own body, but instead what he did, he took your sinful corruption and those times that you dropped the ball, and he cut it out and plucked it out from the body of his son on the cross. And that's what he has done for you. And so we exercise, and we practice, and we try to do better at faithful hand-eye coordination and working on our self-control so that our lives reflect the Spirit of God within us. But why do we do this? Why do we use those hands and eyes to look and see someone else's issue and have a hand in helping and a word for them that is love. Why do we do this? Because we have already been given the greatest gift ever. And this gift is given to us freely. The gift is grace. As Paul remind us, reminds us in Ephesians chapter 2, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you may walk in them. And so when we practice and when we exercise that faithful self-control and hand-eye coordination, we can start out small, just like PE class, and we work our way until we are at a more mature faith. When we think about what God has already given to us, we ask ourselves, why not glorify God in our body if he has already given us everything that we need? He has given us salvation and forgiveness of all of our sins. Why not? glorify God with those same eyes and hands that he had spoken of cutting out. Why not glorify God with your body? And so the grace that you have been shown in the faith which offers you salvation, now exercise a self-control and a hand-eye coordination of faithfulness. Practice these things. And when you drop the ball, ask for forgiveness in earnest and try to do better. Amen.
And now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds of Christ Jesus. Amen.